Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the Drive to School podcast. My name is Kristen Sanchez. I am the events executive for Higher Things, and joining me today is the one who's usually in charge of this specific role, and it's Pastor Harrison Goodman, and he's the content executive for Higher Things. You stole hey, my Pastor job. Hey, Pastor Goodman. You stole my job. I did. I'm coming for you. Uh, okay, so be in charge then. Do in charge stuff right now. Um. Welcome to the Drive to School podcast, everybody. <laughs> Today, we are going to be talking a little bit about what's coming up this weekend in church, and it's going to be a good Sunday. So, uh, Goodman, what you got for us? Um, so, uh, we're going to switch to the one-year lectionary while uh, President Bumsch is on vacation in the wonderful state of Texas. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, this, this weird thing that happens after Easter is that we still have to keep living our lives. Um, and the, the text that we get this Sunday in church actually kind of help with that because you, you've got, you know, the, the big Easter Sunday where the women rush out to the tomb and we know the story, but we just got to hear it one more time. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's joyous. You had to dress up too much. That part wasn't. But, you know, then you had some all right food. Probably it was it was all in all a pretty predictable day. We go into the second Sunday in Easter where we have, you know, doubting Thomas booping the Lord just right there in the side. And we get to see that he really is risen. Uh, then last week for us, we had Good Shepherd Sunday. Sunday. We had Jesus is the good shepherd, the 23rd Psalm, all that real wholesome stuff. And then today it gets kind of dark because we jump right back into the middle of John chapter 16, which is Jesus preparing to go and die uh, and sort of warning the disciples that things are about to get real rough. Uh, it's, it's actually kind of a gift because this is where the fathers in the church start to prepare us for the ascension of our Lord, for the, the reality that, yeah, he rose from the dead, but I look around and sometimes I have trouble finding him. That, that like, I look around the church and I say, why is it still so full of death and sin and pain and evil and misery if Jesus is risen from the dead? And here, now that we're settling into Easter, we get to spend some time with this. Uh, in John chapter 16, I'm just going to read the Bible, uh, if that's allowed on a Christian podcast. I'm okay with it. I think everybody probably is too. So go for well, it. With your permission, since you stole my job. You're you welcome. Just, yep. That was a really I cool. did. Yeah, it's like like a like a princess. A little so. while and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, what is this that he says to us? A little while you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. And because I am going to the father. And they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. And Jesus knew what they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. And it's all like, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I mean, it's not that far after the joy. I, why can't we live longer in the Alleluia? I feel like this is coming straight out of nowhere. So I, I think this is honestly the, the reality that vacations end abruptly too, that bad days tend to come out of nowhere, that in, in this world that's sort of crushed by sin, it just, it doesn't actually take all that long to ruin somebody's day. Uh, I've been ruining people's days for a lot of years now, and I'm real, real good at it. It happens real quick. And, and so that this sort of comes just sort of right out of left field with the Alleluia is still in tandem. Um is, is again, it's a chance to confront the fact that the death and resurrection of Jesus was to conquer sin and death. And so that means that there needs to be some sin and death to conquer. Uh, we, we, we heap those plenty, but this actually gives us a thing to talk about them with. Well, you referenced the early church fathers a little bit ago. So when was it decided that this would be the time of the church year that we start reevaluating those kinds of things or start looking at those kinds of things again? Like, is this something that the church has been practicing for how long? So I, I can't tell you off the top of my head when it got started, but I know Luther preached on it. 
Um, mm-hmm. I, I know that it, it goes so far back that I can steal sermons from uh, our church fathers who, uh, who, who've sort of started this thing out. And it, it actually gives us a, a lot to talk about because one of the things that we tend to do with the sermon is we always sort of say either this existed only way back there and so the resurrection is a great story about people who got to see Jesus rise from the dead, but it has nothing to do with today, or it only exists today. And so nobody else and all of time and space has access to uh, the scriptures because I am sure that they are predicting this war, this sign or this problem. And the reality is it is the same gospel for the same kinds of sinners and honestly the same sins that are being played out over and over again. And so Gerhard preached on this in the middle of a plague. Um, Luther preached on this in the middle of, of uh, uh, everything that was happening throughout the Reformation. Uh, we get to preach on it in the middle of, of a, a war in uh, the Ukraine. And next year, there'll be something else awful that's going on. And um, sort of the, the wonderful part about the lectionary, sort of revisiting this text over and over again, is that it is the same message of hope, the, uh, that, that your sorrow will be turned to joy, that no matter what your sorrow happens to be this time, there actually is a risen Jesus to, to address it. Yeah, when you read through it and, and you come out of it on the other side, it, it doesn't end in despair, right? I mean, it ends in joy. Yeah, and this is actually one of those wonderful things. And we talk about this sometimes that like happiness and joy are not entirely synonymous. Like happiness is is an emotion that uh, gets ruined by my presence, whereas joy is, is that peace, that that contentment, that hope in, in the risen Lord. And so uh, we we start to talk about this. Uh, and Jesus sort of puts joy in two places. He puts joy in the resurrection, in the the little while that you will see me again, that last great day when He comes again in glory. Uh, that last, even in this particular context too. Three days later, when uh, the disciples see him after watching him being placed into the tomb, um, now what we have is a joy that is built not on what's happening in this exact moment, but in the fact that there will be a last day. And even now, I'm already connected to it. He says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. And again, we always want to sort of put this right into the right now. And so uh, if Jesus really loves me, he'd get me a pony. Um, But what we actually have is a God who, uh, who, who gives us the gifts that are actually sustaining, not just sort of the things that, that handle the right now, but the things that handle the right now unto eternity. So he gives us the forgiveness, life, and salvation, uh, but he also gives us the, the peace to, to carry on. He gives us the vocations where we get to confront one another with this gift of gospel. We get to, to have all of the things that, that nourish body and soul until that last great day when we won't need it anymore. Um, it's, it's an important text to have uh, because if all that we sort of want to go on is, is that if Jesus were really here, there would be no problems. If Jesus were really risen, I would not still have sins. Then you're going to have a real hard time dealing with, well, today. Yeah, it, it's, it's helping me to realize that this happiness, the concept of happiness, it's fleeting, right? It's always going to be gone somehow. Um, but this concept of, of the hard stuff, the stuff that you're going to come up against, that's a little bit fleeting too. And the thing that ends up sustaining is the thing that isn't fleeting, the joy that we find in the resurrection. That's constant. That's true. That's real. Right. And then we can go back to sort of the, the happiness and sadness or, or pain. Um, and, and sort of, say, it's not that those aren't real. It, it's just that because they are so powerful, our hearts don't point true north being corrupted by sin anymore. And so things that make me happy are sometimes really good for me and sometimes really not. Um, and even if they are really good for me, you're right, I, I can lose them just by looking at the mirror and sort of realizing, oh no, that's actually my face. Uh, the, the things that bring me pain are looking in the mirror and realizing, oh no, that's actually my face uh, or, or anything that's going on. And we get so wrapped up in them that they sort of become almost our identity, our world, the, the lens through which we view everything. And this is a chance to sort of say, there is more going on than just the hurt that you feel right now, or even the, the happiness that you feel right now. It's not that those aren't real. It's not even that those aren't even good. These are good gifts uh, that, that God God would give you these emotions. It, it's just that we don't have to judge everything by them anymore. So there can be joy that exists in the middle of pain. There, there can even be a contentment that doesn't need to be a manic happiness, um, even if you happen to have one in that day. That's really beautiful. That's really comforting. 
So uh, when we when we get to go to church this Sunday, what we get to hear is God starting to confront us with the rest of our lives until he comes again, until we, we, we enter glory and leave this veil of tears. Uh, and it's actually a, a great thing to, to sort of carry with us that um, you will weep and lament, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. And then you get to sort of say, like, if this is a good Sunday for me and I'm not the weeping and lamenting, that's all right. Like, I don't need to fake it. Um, in the same way that I don't need to fake like a, 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 an outward praise that I'm not actually feeling. Instead, what we get to say is, if you're having a bad day, if you're having a, a, an awful week, if you are burdened by sin and guilt and shame, your sorrow is addressed by the joy that is Christ who is still burst from the tomb. And we're going to start to measure that, not based on sort of whether or not I can just hand the problem to Jesus and say, heal a leper right now while I watch, and then I'll know it's real, and then I'll never question, and then I won't have leprosy, and then nothing will be wrong again, except even those stories, they have to cut off somewhere, so we don't actually watch those guys sin again, suffer again, you know, where they go, what they do, how they end up, how they die in the end again. It's not that those things don't matter. It's that they can't change the end. Right. And that's what we want to hang on to. Your sorrow will be turned to joy. This can't change the end. Whatever you're going up against, whatever is, is smacking you around. Christ is still risen from the dead. And this is actually where it gets to be a wonderful Easter text because it's not simply like wishing ourselves back to walk and talk with Jesus in a place where honestly we wouldn't want to be because it doesn't have air conditioning and we're awful spoiled and bougie. Uh, but instead we get to sort of say, I know where to find Jesus now. He, he's where my, my sorrow is being met with joy. He's at that altar where he's feeding with his body and blood. And so I get to kneel there in sometimes just absolute sorrow and recognize mm -hmm. He's feeding me with something that will sustain me. Where he's promised to be until the last day. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. That's beautiful, Pastor. All right. Well, thank you. I, do you think everyone's driven to school yet? I guess. Are you done stealing my job? I think until... so. I'll let, I'll let you have it back. Yeah. All right. All well, right. then, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Kristen Sanchez, events executive at Higher Things. This has been the Drive to School podcast hosted absolutely by me, Pastor Goodman. 100%. <laughs>